So amygdala is that little um, structure in the brain. You know what it means? It looks like a little almond, so it means almond. So there's actually two of them side by side. So the amygdala's function is to, to give arousal. It's the fear response. So when there is a threatening cue, it comes in. The thalamus picks it up and throws it into the amygdala. And the amygdala has, the amygdala's in the hindbrain. So it's, got, it's, it's built with an economy of action. An economy of action. It only does what it must do. So it has one button, and that is panic or, or threat or <coughs> alarm. Alarm. So the threat cue comes in immediately, and we didn't know this 20 years ago, that it doesn't require conscious awareness for that alarm to be set off. And so the alarm comes off, and then, you know, there's that mass action. So, you know, essentially the amygdala, no matter what the person's seeing or doing or saying, it basically says, uh-oh, that's all, right? You drive in the parking lot and, and you're looking at, you know, the parking lot and you go, gosh, that parking lot's a little full. And if you feel, you know, that's too tight of a space, then basically the amygdala just hears, uh-oh, right? Or, or that, oh, oh, I'm on the 23rd floor, I don't do elevators, uh-oh. Right? So the amygdala throws a, simply put, throws the signal to the hypothalamus, and the signal is what? Uh-oh. Right? Hypothalamus sends a message to the adrenal gland sitting on top of the kidneys, and the message is uh-oh. Right? And the uh, adrenal glands go, uh, yes, ma'am, be right there. They pump away epinephrine. The brain pumps epinephrine, and then here we are doing body operating impeccably, impeccably to a false message. You with me with all this? Okay. So now here's the other interesting thing. How else do you set that off? Through the frontal cortex. Right? The frontal cortex says, uh-oh. Boom. There it's set off. Now here's what we know about the wiring. There is direct wiring from the frontal cortex to the amygdala that will set it off into alarm. That's why you must, <coughs> must do cognitive restructuring. You must do a cognitive intervention because that's how they perceive these situations. Uh-oh, how am I going to fix this? G would happen to you? I'd say it if I were in that situation, but we got to undo that in some way. The frontal cortex sends that message there. There is no m message available. There's no wiring available from the frontal cortex to the amygdala that says, just kidding. Didn't mean that. You can back down now. There is no communication whatsoever about this is a safe environment that you can say to the amygdala once it's de declared, once it's had a trauma, all kinds of, you know, panic attack is a near death experience, a physical abuse, sexual abuse, a hurricane, all that stuff. Fear that I'm going to choke my daughter and kill her. I mean, all those things, a little trauma. You can't, can't get that met. Well, how in the world do you then fix that? What you do to fix that is get the frontal cortex quiet. Be quiet. Ala create an environment that you step into so the amygdala can fully experience the scene without the intrusion of the frontal cortex saying, uh-oh, and it then learns through pure experience, you know, I don't need so much epinephrine. And then it starts to back away. And that's really what habituation is over time, if, and this is why people fail with habituation. You know, if you've got a client who has generalized anxiety or whatever, you send them off to do behavioral practice, and they're worried before they go in, and they're worried during it, and they're worried, oh, what, what, what have I done afterward? No wonder they're not getting better, right? 